Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to take a look at the Sailor 1911 Large. This is a North American exclusive, it is the Royal Tangerine color, but this should apply to all 1911 Large pens by Sailor. Um, this is kind of a staple in Sailor's line. Their 1911s, the normal size, are a little bit smaller. The Large... I don't think I could get much smaller than this and still enjoy the pen, so this is the one I picked up. But we'll go ahead and jump into it, take a look at what I like about it, what I'm a bit more neutral towards, what I dislike, give you a writing comparison, and or a write, writing sample, and then I'll give you my conclusion. Um, there's a lot of things I like about this pen, but the things I don't like are very, very strong. So let's go ahead and get into it. So we're going to do size comparisons a little different today. I'm just going to kind of, instead of splitting, splitting it into clips, I'm just going to do it all in one. So here we have the Sailor 1911 Large, we have the Platinum 3776 Century, the Pilot Vanishing Point, and the Lamy 2000. Now I picked all these pens for a very good reason. <clears throat> Depending on where you get this, it's in a very similar price range to a lot of these. So I figured that was a good, you know, starting point. And they're very similar in size. Especially these two here. So you can see the 3776 is just a tad bit shorter. But where it really matches up a lot is in the cap. The body of the sailor is just a little bit longer. But the cap's about the same length. The pilot is a little tiny bit, maybe a little bit longer. And the Lamy 2000 is a tiny bit shorter, mainly because of the flat ends there. So we'll check out uncapped comparison. The sailor here. I'll reorganize these for y'all and just um. Yeah, I guess I'll go and pop the nib on that one. Go ahead and reorganize these. So you can see that <clears throat> the Sailor is longer than the 3776. Not by a huge amount, but it is longer. The biggest thing you probably notice though is the grip section is larger. It is shorter than the Vanishing Point, which the Vanishing Point is an exceptionally long pen when it's clicked. And it is longer than the Lamy 2000. Quick size comparison to the Spider Girl Dragonfly. Um, the reason I'm comparing these two is this is very orange as well. And they're somewhat similar in color. Um, this one's a little bit more of like a yellowy orange, a little bit more neon. This is a bit more of a red orange. But the shades are somewhat similar. On to what I like about it. So, first thing, the color and the appearance. <clears throat> now, the cigar shape, it doesn't really matter to me. It's not very exciting as far as pin shapes go. But, the color is the largest reason I got it. I love this bright, vibrant orange. It's, it's really, really very... It's a very poppy color. It's very bright, very in your face. I like it a lot. The silver trim accents it very, very well. I think if they had gone with gold, it would look a little strange. I wouldn't like it nearly as much. I think it would just be kind of off, to be honest. So I think the silver complements this very, very well. That, and I also prefer silver over gold, just as a color in general. So that kind of appeals to my tastes. Next, the nib and the flow. Okay, so... <clears throat> This nib does provide some feedback. I will probably smooth it out and it may make me like it a lot more. But it is less feedback heavy than the 3776 was when I initially got it. So it's not too bad. The flow is mm, kind of medium. It's a little wetter than 3776. Not quite as wet as, say, my Vanishing Point or um, my wife's uh, Elite 95 by Pilot. Those two are a little bit wetter. But this one isn't bad. It also has some, quite a bit of give to it because it's a 21 karat nib. It is not a flex nib. You will spring this if you try to push it. The design is also very, very nice. I'll see if I can get it a little closer here. So you can see it has the anchor imprint, 21K, and then the percentage of gold. And then it's a sailor at the bottom. It has this beautiful, beautiful pattern going up each side to meet in the middle. Very, very nice nib. It's beautiful, especially when it's covered in ink. Looks great. The nib design is kind of a big reason I got this pen as well. So The size of it is pretty nice in my hand. You can see that it sits, you know, just past my hand, which is my preferred size. I want to sit just a little bit back. So I prefer the size of this versus the 3776 quite a bit. 
the grip section is also larger, which is nice for me. Very, very close to the uh, Sailor M800 or M805. So if you like that size, that grip size, this is going to do just fine for you. Even when capped, it's it's not super long. You know, it's, it's not too bad. You can put it in your pocket. It doesn't really stick out of a dress shirt pocket too bad. A little bit, but it's not, you know, not horrible. And the post is pretty deep, which is nice. And the size also remains, you know, pretty good. It doesn't stick up too far past my hand. And I can post this pin. I don't do it a lot, but every now and then I, I do post it. And it doesn't back weight the pin by too much. It feels pretty balanced. Maybe the balance is about here. Kind of wish it would be more down here, but this isn't too bad. The cap threads are really nice. They go on very smoothly. And when you get about here, you'll notice there's a tiny gap still. It hasn't pushed down all the way. When you push it down that last little bit of the way, you can kind of feel it securely lock in. It's nice. It is much better than, say, the 3776 cap um, action, which is a little bit more jarring as you push. Let's see, there's a gap there. Push that last little bit. It kind of, there's a little bit like a sticking grind. See if you can hear this. So that's that's a little bit much. This is a lot smoother, a lot quieter, a lot more pleasant feedback. The packaging for this is really nice as well. So if you watch my Atlanta pen videos, you've seen this already. But it comes in this little white cardboard. I'll kind of sorry about that. I'll kind of get this off of camera real quick. It comes in this little white cardboard sleeve. And you slide it out. And it's this navy box. I think navy and orange go together very well. Kind of show you the. It's a little difficult here with the lighting. It's pretty nice. It has a little gold trim around the edge. Pop it up, and it's kind of this soft material um, with a sort of fake, silky kind of top. It's a sailor. It has a little lift right here, and it has all your paperwork and everything in it. Some cartridges that I obviously haven't used, and it comes with a converter and all that stuff, which is nice. So pretty good packaging. I wouldn't expect any less at this price point, to be honest. But, you know, it's a, it's a nice little benefit. They could have kind of cheaped out on the packaging. I almost wish they had and brought the price down a little bit, but we'll get into that in a bit. On to the neutral. First up, the price. So depending on where you get this, and we'll discuss more about that in the bad section, dislike. But um, depending on where you get this, it can run about 180 for different colors. So from Japan, you can get it for about $188, which is a decent price. Um, there are some things that aren't super great about it, but for 188 bucks, decent pen. Now that puts it right in the range of the pens that I showed you earlier, the Vanishing Point, the Lamy 2000, the Platinum 3776, if you buy it in America. So, I think it beats out the 3776, at least the version I got from Japan. I don't know if the finishing is any better with the American markup, I doubt it, but beats out the 3776 for me. The Lamy 2000 I preferred over this pen. Vanishing point, I prefer it over this pen, but the price is decent at $188. The section threads are not great. <clears throat> the threads on the cap are nice. These are not super awesome. They sound awful. Let's try to hear that. They sound really bad, which they could be part of the plastic on metal, but what I don't get is that the Platinum 3776, 3776 um, Section threads, like where the body touches the section, are much, much better. Also, it does have this O-ring here. I'm not really sure why, since you cannot eyedrop or convert this because of the metal inside, so that's a little strange. It does give it a slightly more secure feeling as you're going for that final close, kind of like on the cap. Let's see if I can get this to focus. It will one day. There we go. There's a tiny gap there. When you finish screwing it, you do kind of feel the O-ring secure itself. However, it doesn't do very much. Lastly, the fit and finish are not that great for what I paid for this pen. For $188, sure. But I didn't pay that. I paid the American price. So where the top of the cap meets the actual cap, there is a gap. Sorry to go all Dr. Seuss there, but <clears throat> that little metal band sits not quite flush with the actual cap. The top of the cap, the finial, I believe, um, does sit flush with it, so that's fine. But when you get to right here, get it focus any closer at all, you can see there's a little bit of a step 
and that's very, very annoying. You can feel it all over every side of the pen. Does the exact same thing on the back here. So you can get it show up. Yeah, kind of, you can see it there. Same thing, it, it's just there. It does something very similar on the cat band. So those three spots are really annoying, to be honest. Unlike the 3776, there are no grip section seams, so that's nice. There are some seams that were not polished out on the cat threads. You can kind of see one right there. You don't feel them. You don't see them. It's nice. But they are there, and I figured it'd be worth a mention. So let's go ahead and jump into the dislike. First thing in the dislike section, the price. I know you're like, oh no, Jake, you just mentioned the price in neutral. You said it wasn't too bad. It's $188, da, da, da. Okay, so that's the price from Japan. But the price in America for these is $288. There's a $100 markup, and I have no idea why. I understand there are some import fees and stuff like that, but come on. That's horrible. So... <clears throat> I got this pen from Drum Ghouls at the Atlanta Pen Show. I got a little discount, not very much, not nearly enough to make me feel like this was a good purchase. I don't hate it, but I really wish that they offered the Royal Tangerine at the $188 because it would feel like a much, much better value. So the 1911 in general, not a bad value. 1911 Royal Tangerine and the other American exclusives, not that great of a value. So it's kind of frustrating. That just... It takes it from being a pretty good pen down to a mediocre pen for the price. Because at $300, you're competing hard with a lot of other brands. And I think you can get better value elsewhere for that money. The clip on this is not good. So I normally put this pen, when, or any pen when I'm carrying it with me, in my Knock Sinclair, I believe the name is. I've got to do a review of this. So you can see right here I put in this little pouch. Now, I'm going to go to put it in. You can see the clip is lining up. I'm trying to get this so you guys can see it. But when you push, it just continuously pushes that down. It does not slide in. That is extremely frustrating. So every time I want to put this in that case, I have to lift the clip and then push it down in there. Just so it'll go in. That's frustrating. I have to do it every time. I've literally stopped doing that and just turn it sideways and slide it down in there. Because this clip is awful. It looks fantastic, by the way. It looks really cool, very Art Deco kind of look to it. Simple, clean lines. I like it a lot, but it sucks. The last thing, and probably the biggest frustration for me, and that it is literally just a frustration, is even after I screw the cap, or the section to the body, every time I unscrew it, and you can see it here, you can see it move because I'm tightening it down because it constantly becomes unscrewed. I will uncap this pen at work, go to use it, and guess what I have to do every time? This, I have to just... Every single time, because it becomes unscrewed. That is infuriating, and I don't know why it does it, and I want it to stop. Because I can feel it as I'm writing with it. If I don't do that, I can feel it kind of rocking back and forth. And I think it's because of those awful, awful section threads. But that just drives me insane. Onto the writing sample. So we have the... Sailor 1911 Large. I really hope it's spelled Tangerine right. Royal Tangerine. I'm pretty certain that's how it's spelled. It just feels too easy to me. I don't know. Um, the nips, again, pretty good. Decent kind of medium wetness flow. I've had it inked up with Diamine and Lamy ink so far. Both of which are kind of middling inks. The Lamy's maybe a little bit drier, but they perform very well. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do just a line size comparison here. This is a medium nib, by the way. This is a um, hard medium, which I can show you right here. You can kind of see on the side there the HM. That's where Sailor marks their nib sizes. I don't know why, but it's not bad. It keeps the top from getting any more cluttered than it already is. So we'll do a standard line. A reverse writing line, then a line with a little bit of pressure. This is 21 karat gold. You do not want to flex it, but you can get line variation. Do not push this nib. You will spring it. 
If you spring this nib, do not get mad at me because you sprung it because you were an idiot. Don't push this nib. It's 21 karat gold. You can probably get a lot more variation than that out of it, but you will spring it and you'll be mad because these are expensive. I mean, I don't even think Sailor offers replacement nibs for this. And um, at this price, I'm scared to try to remove it. So, the ink, by the way, is Lamy Vibrant Pink. That is awful. It's fine. But it writes pretty well. Very reliable. The flow uh, is nice. I haven't had any hard starts or stops or anything like that. The pen seems to seal up very well. And it writes pretty good. So no real complaints on the writing performance, apart from that slight bit of feedback that I'll probably work out. But if you like that little bit of sort of um, lead pencil-like feedback, you know, you might like this pen. In conclusion, this is a pretty decent pen. That's about the best recommendation I can give it. And I've got to say, unless you really, really like these North American limited edition colors, which they are very nice, I'll give you that. Just don't buy this at $288. You're probably going to be fairly disappointed. It's not a bad pen. The smaller sizes are cheaper by quite a bit. So if you um, are okay with smaller pens, maybe go a little bit smaller, save you some money. Won't be that bad of a purchase at that point. If the fit and finish are about the same. But at $288, I cannot recommend this. At $188, if it's something you're interested in, go ahead. It's not a ridiculous, insane value like a $70 Platinum 3776. This pen, I will tell literally anyone remotely into fountain pens to go buy because it's amazing at the price. It is astounding. This is decent at the price, and that's about as good of a recommendation as I'm going to give it, and that's at the $188. For $288, you better really like these colors. So, I would say if you have the opportunity, try it out, see what you think, then go buy it online for a little bit less money. I understand that's not a very nice thing to say. I do try to support um, our American uh, distributors and everything like that when I can. 95% of my pens have been bought from American distributors. The only ones I have bought from Japan have been this one, which I bought actually in Japan. And um, I think that's actually about it. So I paid full price for almost all of these. So I, I think I, I'm entitled enough to say, don't pay that $300 for this pen. Go get it somewhere else if you're okay with not having this particular color. That's about it for today, guys. Um, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to check out my other reviews if you like this stuff. And please feel free to subscribe. Um, it doesn't do much, but it makes me feel better as a person. Thanks, guys. Bye.